Is V Rising the best survival game? It's a hefty question. It just dropped. It is a soft core to mid core survival game that focuses on combat, exploration, and adventure. Much like the other 500 survival games that have dropped in recent years. I am absolutely sick of the genre. It is oversaturated, done way too many times. But apparently I'm also the biggest hypocrite because I find myself getting sucked into playing every single one of these games. The concepts behind them have just been way too good to pass out. All of these games have one thing in common. They are fantastic escape from reality. They're also all survival games. All of these games have two things in common. What better way to find out how V Rising stacks up to the other games than to pit them against each other in a fight to the death? I've made a bracket here with a list of a bunch of games that fit into this genre, most of which I've played, but some of which I had to phone a friend for. I'm gonna rate them based off of several categories. Categories that, in my opinion, determine the good and the bad in survival games. The winner will face off against the star of the show, V Rising. Before I get into it, I understand that a lot of this is opinion-based, but this is my list, so suck my <clears throat> uh, Comment down below what you would do differently. Nobody really played the day before very long because it was just unplayable garbage. Right, so let's go through each of the categories. We'll start off with with the survival mechanic in the day before. It's a scam. The survival mechanic in seven days to die. You have the standard like, you gotta eat and drink survival mechanics, but then there's some other things too. So weather affects you and you can also get injuries and stuff that you'll need to heal. And if you're walking around on that leg or whatever, it makes it worse. So oh, there's there's a lot. It's a little bit more hardcore. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Let's move on to the crafting in the day before. It's a scam in seven days to die. Uh, there's a lot of crafting in this game, and that's what you're going to spend most of your time doing. And I've covered all the bases with that one. Like anything you can think of, you can probably make it onto vehicles, guns, ammo, like whatever. So you kind of hit on the next category, which is resource gathering and farming, which I'm assuming is very grindy since there's a lot to craft. Yes. In the day before, the resource gathering is a scam. So we're going to move on to the next category, which is item management. Uh, would you say it's good, bad, mid? I would say it does the job. I mean, you have an inventory you have to manage um, with extra inventory slots that you can get through gear and stuff and perks. In the next category, we're doing building. The building in the day before is actually a scam, but in seven days to die. <laughs> I can't do this seriously. Bro. I'm just gonna, you know what? Let's just disqualify it and save these categories for the next one. <laughs> cool. Neck. Uh, we have Enshrouded and Nightingale. <laughs> Enshrouded and Nightingale. The survival mechanic in Enshrouded is actually very simple, but it does give you buffs for the food that you eat. You don't actually need to eat. Like you won't die if you don't eat or drink, which I personally love. That's right. You have like three buff slots or something, right? Three buff slots. Nightingale is actually like the same way. So like you have a couple of food buffs that you can get and they just give you like extra health extra stamina just and a couple other like small little buffs yeah maybe a little bit more than that you'll get some like resistances here and there it depends on what you eat there's a lot of different food options nightingale is just a little more complicated in your opinion nightingale or enshrouded go uh <laughs> I'm over here cutting throats, bro. I'm like, fuck it. This is my opinion. I like this one more because I like it more. I'm actually going to say Nightingale. Let's talk about some of the crafting. I think crafting in Entrouded is done beautifully. It's simple, but it doesn't limit you. And the variety is is there. I, I agree with most of that. Nightingale, I have some mixed opinions on this one or mixed feelings on this one because of how complicated the crafting system is. It's, it's good because you get some depth out of it. So you can really customize your guy kind of the way you want. But that also comes with the cost of it just being this overly complicated complicated system with way too many crafting benches. I'm going to make the executive decision here and give this one to Enshrouded. I'm inclined to agree. We touched on resource gathering and farming. I'm just going to go ahead and give that one to Enshrouded too because of what we talked about. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I think Enshrouded is just better in general with that. Nightingale kind of makes you just... I don't know. I was having some problems finding resources, even going to the right places for them. It was kind of annoying. Next is item management. I never had an issue with enshrouded item management. Like while playing through it, I don't think anything ever stood out to where I was frustrated with the item management mechanics. Yeah, I never had any issues with enshrouded or with Nightingale. I think the item management is totally fine. Maybe it's a tie. If they're a tie in that, then I would still give that one to enshrouded because you have chests in enshrouded that let you pull from them. Whereas this game, unless they added it recently, does not have that. Okay, cool. Easy, enshrouded. Hold up, hold up. We have to do Uno Reverso because I'm looking at it now and you can pull everything from chess now straight from your bench. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> okay. So item management goes back to being a tie. <laughs> Next is building. Shrouded easily has one of the, some of the best building I've ever encountered in any game. It works really well. It works how you want it to. You can build anywhere without any issues. In this one, I think Nightingale takes the win. Really? Um, Because you can 
Yeah, you can set out blueprints before you commit to your build and you can adjust your blueprint as you go. And on top of that, your little AI companion can pull materials you need out of chests and build your blueprints for you. What if you don't want the stupid AI to use the items that you have in your chest? Then you can lock your chests off from them. Okay. All right, we'll go with what you said. <laughs> combat. Shrouded combat is pretty good. I like that there's a parry system. I like that there's a roll system. I like that you can sneak. Combat in this one is a little more simple. You do have some cool things like you can use spells and stuff you could put on your weapons. I would say the combat in, in Shrouded is more satisfying for sure. World slash graphics. Just because I've seen the game, I'm going to say Nightingale does not win this one, bro. Nightingale looks rough versus in Shrouded looks very pristine. The world is built. It's beautiful. It doesn't feel necessarily alive because it does lack a lot of NPCs and a lot of story driven stuff. Nightingale has the potential to look decent, but like it runs like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let you win this one. Even if you told me Nightingale is the best game I've ever played. It's the most amazing looking game no. I've ever played. Brad, I'd be like, you're blind. Progression. Progression in Shrouded is talk to NPC, do their quest. I think it lacks a little bit, if I'm going to be completely honest. But progression and getting new crafting materials and stuff is not bad. So that's where it makes up for it as a survival game. Yeah, I was I was fine with the progression in Shrouded. It made sense and didn't have any problems with it. I, however, do not like the progression system in Nightingale. So they tried something different with the way you like unlock things. Like you'll find these traders and that's where you're going to buy like, all of your recipes and or, stuff. Oh, trader. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it requires you to just the, the same like boring, grindy objectives over and over and over again to get this stuff to go to a trader to buy the recipes you need to advance. And it's just, I didn't think that gameplay loop was fun. The last one is the category that encompasses all the categories, which is your quality of life, which again, I'm inclined to give to Enshrouded, but I can't only give it to it because I've never played Nightingale. Which game is less of a bitch to play? <laughs> the game that's less of a bitch to play, I'm going to have to say is uh, Enshrouded. So tallying up the points out of all the categories, we have to give it to Enshrouded Nightingale. Sorry, buddy. Maybe in the future when its full release comes out, we can reattack. Next is Valheim and Seven Days to Die. Unfortunately for Seven Days to Die, I absolutely love Valheim. Let's go through each of the categories to give it at least a fighting chance. The first of which is the survival mechanic. Valheim coined the, instead of needing to eat and needing to drink, you eat and drink in order to gain the buff mechanic. And because of that, I gotta give this one to Valheim. I understand it's a pivotal part of the hardcore and old school survival games. That's how they came up is with this eat and drink mechanic, but I have to eat and drink in real life. I play games to escape real life. I don't want to have to eat and drink. So that is why I have such a heavy bias. Yeah, like if I'm just chilling in base and crafting and stuff, I don't want to have to worry about that shit. <laughs> just drink some dirty water, now I have dysentery, oh no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the crafting, crafting in Valheim is very satisfactory. No, th how do you say that? Satisfying? Satisfactory is always in my head. I should have included satisfactory probably it's too late i think crafting is but in valheim is done very well because the i guess i'm dipping into progression right now but the way that you progress through the world by crafting and getting better items is done in a very satisfying and very well-paced manner i pretty much like everything about the crafting system and the progression in valheim what about seven days to die though there's a lot to the crafting system in this game because you level up and you get xp and then you get points to spend on these perks uh, it's a lot more complicated i think it's a little too grindy for my taste but some people might like it personally I'd rather have Valheim system. They're very different types of games too. One is like a prepare for this big thing that's about to happen to you. Valheim is like prepare at your own pace type of thing. Resource gathering and farming. I love the fact that you have to actually go out and explore the world in order to figure out where, which biome you can find a specific resource. What about for seven days to die? I mean, there's a way to target farm specific things. Like if you know what things spawn in like specific stores and know when those places are gonna like respawn their loot, you're not like rolling the dice in Valheim. Like you just go get what you want to get. And in Seven Days to Die, you're you're kind of rolling the dice on a lot of stuff. There's a lot of RNG. I would argue to say that there is RNG in Valheim as well, because you never know if, because it's a procedurally generated world, you never know if you're going to get a resource in a close biome or you have to sail across the seven seas in order to get the resource that you're looking for. If you're in the biome where that resource is supposed to be, you're going to find it, like with very few exceptions. I see what you're trying to say. Whereas like loot in Seven Days to Die is like when you loot something, you don't know what you're going to get. Moving on to item management for Valheim. Valheim, I think it's good. I think Seven Days to Die is the same, like it does what it needs to do, but the UI is god awful. So I would just say Valheim would take that on storage. Just because the UI is bad. <laughs> I is terrible. I don't care what anybody says, it's awful. Building for Valheim is very good. I think it's gotten better over the time that it's been in early access as well, which has made it one of the most satisfying games to build in. How is the building in Seven Days to Die? It's meh. It's very much like Minecraft building where everything's like a block. Even though something doesn't look like a block, it takes up a block 
block of space. The building goes to Valheim as well, just because, you know, it's better. Combat. Combat in Valheim is pretty not bad. I think it could be done better, but for what it is and for the amount of different types of enemies that you can encounter, different types of weapons you can have, different biomes you can encounter these enemies in, the boss fights, I think all of it comes together to be a really, really solid game. There are some cool things in Seven Days to Die. I mean, the fact that you have all these cool guns, guns and vehicles and stuff, but there's not a lot of enemy variety, so it does get kind of stale. The only real challenge is the horde just getting swarmed. Yeah, and that's kind of really it. Also, uh, Seven Days to Die runs like shit, and during the horde, uh, it makes combat pretty bad. Perfect. That goes directly into the next category, which is world graphics and performance. The graphics, as far as like player, character, and the characters, I wouldn't say they're fantastic. I wouldn't say they even try to be realistic, but they're it's a unique art style. It's kind of stylized in a way that gives it character. Yes. Seven Days to Die does go for a somewhat realistic look, and I would say it has not aged too well. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look super great. Even on a pretty high-end PC, like on that seventh day, you're going to have to turn those graphics down. Okay, let's talk about progression now. So progression in Valheim, you prepare, you resource gather, you craft, you beat the boss, you move on to the next biome, you do the same thing. I love the gameplay loop for that game. It works very well. And with each of the biomes being so different and each of the bosses being so different, it really doesn't get stale. This is going to be a hard comparison too, because Seven Days to Die has a complicated progression system. It's, it's very much XP based and time management because like the whole game is it's a rush especially if you're playing with people seven days to die's progression system is really fun to deal with because you you know you get xp and you can specialize in different things it just makes it an overall pretty good experience when you're playing with friends that's gonna be another personal preference win for valheim overall quality of life i can't think of anything at the top of my head that i had to complain about valheim maybe i'll have to think a little bit harder when i'm comparing it to a game that is not how old is the seven days to die like five thousand years old it's been in early access for like literally 10 years from what i've read and i could be wrong because i've never played the game the quality of life is is that of a 10 year old game yeah and one thing i think a lot of people don't think about when it comes to quality of life is it's very much impacted by your ui <laughs> it's how you interact with the game and when your ui is looking like that <laughs> seven days to die it's it's not good <laughs> so another dub for valheim and unfortunately seven days to die was slaughtered next up on the fight to the death is power world and fallout 76 starting off with power world survival mechanics eating and drinking is your main and basic survival mechanic in power world and it's very comparable to fallout 76 you get too hungry you get to the point where you're starving and you start taking hp damage hp damage as opposed to what other damage and in both games you cannot die from starving so i would say for survival mechanics they're so comparable and so similar that they get a tie. Crafting for both of these games, crafting in Power World is ridiculously simple, almost underwhelming. Fallout 76 crafting, it has a little bit more to it because it has weapon variety crafting, different things that you can do to upgrade and mod your weapons, which brings a lot more variety to the table than just crafting the weapon itself. So Fallout 76 takes the point on that one. Resource gathering and farming. In Power World, you get one resource from fighting enemies and then most of the other resources you gather from mining and from hitting trees, etc. Fallout 76 you get more resources from looting and exploring and fighting different types and varieties of enemies so again just because of the variety that it brings to the table i think fallout takes the cake on that one building building is something that i haven't done too much of in fallout 76 but from what i can tell it's very similar to fallout 4 you know it's got its intricacies but it can also be super simple and fun to do how world on the other hand the building is very very simple and almost rudimentary so again i think i got to give the building to Fallout 76 based off of somebody who enjoys a little bit more complicated slash freedom of variety than somebody who enjoys to just plop down things that you get from progressing through the game. Fallout 76 combat is melee and first and third person shooting. Power World, on the other hand, you fight with both yourself and with a little buddy. And just because of that, just because of the nostalgia and the Pokemon aspect to it, even though I never played the Pokemon games, I just, I gotta give it to Power World. World and graphics. Power World is cutesy, it's beautiful, it's open, it's green. The graphics are not the best in the world, uh, but it's good for what it is. And it's also early access. Fallout 76 is a little bit darker. It has a lot to bring to the table as far as aesthetic and setting goes. And the world feels very much alive, mainly because now in its current state, there's a lot more NPCs to interact with. Cults out in the world fighting and interacting with each other, etc, etc. This one's hard because visually, I think I'm more attracted to a, 
a game like Power World, but I've had so much fun exploring and figuring out the world in Fallout 76 that I have to give it to Fallout 76 on this one. Next up is progression. I am a simple gal with a one track mind. Because of the simplicity aspect, I'm gonna have to just give it to Power World. It is so easy to pick that game up and figure out what you need to do next to progress through the world. Lastly, quality of life. We've kind of hit a little bit of this on the rest of the categories. And honestly, I don't think either one of these games stand out on having better quality of life additions. So a tie. Scoring that up, Fallout 76 takes the cake and moves on to the next portion of the bracket. All right, the next head-to-head -head battle is going to be Lord of the Rings Return to Moira and Grounded. Starting off with the survival mechanic, in Grounded, it's eat and drink or die. In Lord of the Rings Return to Moira, it's eat and drink to buff yourself. And just because of that, just because I hate the eat and drink or die mechanic, Lord of the Rings is going to win this one. Crafting, on the other hand, I, honestly, both games have really good crafting mechanics, but I really thought that the crafting and Grounded used the environment to create very unique things and because of that i gotta give crafting to grounded versus lord of the rings where it was just kind of like the crafting wasn't bad it was done pretty well but nothing stands out to me resource gathering and farming i gotta give to lord of the rings it's not as annoying to go out and gather resources in lord of the rings maybe just because it's a little bit easier to do so item management neither of them stand out to me as being better than the other so it's going to be a tie building both had great building mechanics within them but because of the variety and the places in which you could build in grounded versus lord of the rings grounded is going to take the cake on that one combat actually think is much as I hate to say it, Grounded has some of the worst combat to ever be built in a game. The hit registration is off, the hit boxes are weird. There's just a lot that I have to complain about combat. Combat is the only thing I complain about when it comes to Grounded. The world slash graphics. Both games have really good graphics. Both games you can tell were made by very talented development teams. Grounded though creates a world that feels more exciting to be in and explore. Progression, Lord of the Rings Return to Moira has really simple and very satisfying progression, but it's not that exciting. Grounded takes this one as well, even though it's very, very grindy. The story that it tells is probably one of the best stories in any survival game. It's very fun to follow and unravel the mystery that is the game. Overall quality of life, I'm giving it to Grounded because I played through the alpha stages of that game and remember being very frustrated frustrated with a lot of mechanics that were later changed when they put out the 1.0 version of the game to make it one of the most user-friendly games that I've ever played. Lord of the Rings does not have bad quality of life mechanics at all. So I know this is, again, bias, very biased because I didn't see any changes, quote unquote, in the things that I wanted to see changed in Lord of the Rings because it was a full release versus seeing the changes from a crappy iteration of the game to a great iteration of the game with Grounded. But what can I say? This entire thing is based on opinion anyway, so I got to give to grounded. I know there's going to be so many people mad in the comments. Next up is Enshrouded and Sons of the Forest. Briefly going over the categories, survival mechanic. Enshrouded, we already talked about. Sons of the Forest does have a, hey, you have to eat and drink in order to survive, but it also has stat boosting effects on some meals. So it incorporates both, but you can eat legs and arms in Sons of the Forest. So purely because of chaos, I'm going to give it to Sons of the Forest. Yomp on some humans. Crafting. We've already talked about Enshrouded crafting. Sons of the Forest has very cool crafting mechanics that you can see come to fruition right in front of your eyes. I would argue to say it's a little bit more satisfying than Enshrouded Crafting, so I'm going to give that to Sons of the Forest as well. Resource gathering for both is actually very comparable, very similar. You go whack trees, you go explore a couple of dungeons, you loot. So this one's hard for me. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to tie it up for right now. Item management, Enshrouded is super straightforward. Item management in Sons of the Forest is actually very unique. You manage your items directly from your backpack, so it's not your typical menu pops up and you get to see your items there, which is a risky move because it could overcomplicate the item management system and it in ways does, but because it's so unique and it works so well, I think I gotta give it to Sons of the Forest. Building was exponentially improved from the first forest game to Sons of the Forest. With that being said though, it takes away from the fantastical aspects of it as in it's more of a sim rather than building your fantasy base. And because of that, because I've enjoyed Entrouded building so, so much, I'm gonna have to give the building to Entrouded, but both have really good building mechanics. Combat, I'm just going to say straight off the bat, is going to go to Enshrouded because of the mechanics that we talked about earlier. And for Sons of the Forest, I just found myself kind of whacking away at the enemies, even though the enemies were really cool and creepy and it has a completely different feel to it. Enshrouded just does it better gameplay-wise. World's graphics and performance. Both of these games are tailored games. No complaints here. I don't really know. This one's kind of hard for me. The feel of just being stranded and lost in the forest is captured perfectly. Enshrouded is more of a fantasy land and it has more variety when it comes to its world. <sighs> 
I don't know. I would say purely based off of the fact that there are little puzzles when you explore the world and Entrouded, Entrouded is gonna take the win. All right, progression. Entrouded progression, again, we already talked about. Sons of the Forest has pretty standard progression. It doesn't really have a pacing or feel to it the way that Entrouded does. So I'm gonna give Entrouded the dub on that. Overall quality of life, I will have to give to Sons of the Forest because they have those AI characters that help you you know, resource gather and build and get food, et cetera, et cetera. We have a tie. You know what it's gonna come down to? Which one I played longer. I have 26.3 hours in Enshrouded and 20.8 hours in Sons of the Forest. Enshrouded wins by luck. We are down to the semifinals and it's getting a little bit heated here. We have Valheim and Fallout 76. Let's get into it. Survival mechanic, Valheim boosts stats and in Fallout 76, you have to eat. So Valheim takes that one. Crafting, Fallout 76 has weapon mods and crafting and just because of that i think i'm gonna oh, well, it's hard because even though valheim doesn't have specific weapon mods it does have a ridiculous amount of weapons i'm gonna come back to that resource gathering and farming in valheim is very satisfying it's also very satisfying in fallout 76 completely different valheim you hit trees you get to resource fallout 76 you explore the world you loot kill enemies you get resources well both you do that but it's more prominent in 76 so i'm gonna have to give it to 76 but then oh, but then in Valheim, you actually have to go out into the world and sail the seas with your friends in order to find different biomes in order to resource gather. But once you find the biomes, it gets a little bit redundant to do resource gathering. You just kind of are hitting trees like every other game. In 76, you can go explore with your friends and do events that happen throughout the world while you're resource gathering, but it is a little bit more grindy. I don't know. We'll come back to that one. Item management. Valheim item management, straightforward. Fallout 76 item management. Both have over encumbered mechanics, but I will say in Valheim, they increase the over encumbered weight limit exponentially so that it's not an issue anymore versus in Fallout 76, I'm always having to figure out what the hell is so heavy in my backpack, which has made it a little bit annoying, which is gonna allow me to give this one easily to Valheim. Building, it's more complicated in Fallout 76 and I don't think there's as much of an emphasis on building in 76 as there is in Valheim. So I'm gonna give that one to Valheim as well. Combat, oh man, it's so different. It pretty much comes down to do you enjoy fps's or do you enjoy what would you call it hitting people i'm gonna give combat to valheim because the world bosses that you fight are super unique and very fun and very cinematic the world and graphics honestly the graphics in 76 and the performance in 76 is still pretty dog shit even though they've made a lot of improvements and changes over time valheim is still technically in early access and i think it runs fantastic it looks amazing valheim takes the cake on that progression is way grindier in fallout 76 than it is in valheim comparatively i've played with more people on valheim than i have with 76 i've only played with with one other person in 76. Okay, so Valheim already won. I'm not gonna go back to the ones that I skipped over. We'll just call them ties. Made it to the finals, baby. Next up, Grounded versus Enshrouded. Grounded has had more time to settle its roots, finish its story, finish a lot of the things they were promising for the game, and put out the final product of the game versus Enshrouded, who has had a fantastic opening to its game, but it still has a lot of potential and still has a long way to go. But with that being said, we're comparing the games as they are now. So first category, survival mechanic. Off the bat, actually, Entrouded is going to win the survival mechanic because it gives buffs rather than the necessity to drink and eat, just annoyingly. Crafting was more unique and grounded. I think it, they're very comparable, but it was more unique and cooler to see and grounded because you use little bug parts and stuff to make your armor and weapons. So grounded is going to take that one. Resource gathering and farming, super similar in both. Honestly, a tie. Item management, again, I don't think one does it better than the other. That's another tie for me. Building, I had a lot less frustration while playing through Entrouded. Building than I did with Grounded. But I think what draws me to Grounded with all of these is the aesthetics and the materials used to build. With that being said, Grounded was extremely grindy, which made building a little bit of a tear your head off and throw it at the wall. So I'm gonna have to give that one to Enshrouded. Combat, we talked about how Grounded combat is not good, no bueno. So combat is Enshrouded. The world and graphics, both again, not procedurally generated worlds, handcrafted, both done really well. Grounded overall, exploring had more awe factor, had more, oh, look at that. Oh, look at this type of things when you were exploring the world. And because of that, Grounded is gonna take the dub on that. Progression systems. Entrouded progression is pretty satisfying. Grounded was also really satisfying and really cool to unlock the next area. Grounded has an amazing story. So it's not just now I have more crafting materials, it's now I have more pieces of the story, which made it a very unique and fun game, especially com when compared to other games in the genre. Entrouded, on the story and lore side 
is okay. It does have NPCs. They do tell you things, but it's mostly, hey, you know, they point you in a direction and tell you to go do something that you don't really care about. You just want to get the crafting materials for it. So purely because of its charm while progressing through the game and just based off of how exciting it was to unlock a new piece of the backyard, it, Grounded is going to take this one. Overall quality of life. Both have storage chests that you can pull from if you want to craft from them. I don't really have many complaints about either game. I am thoroughly surprised that this one came down to a tie. It's going to come down to the same thing that it came down to for the previous one. Sorry, Entrouded. 26.3 hours. I don't think is going to cut it. Grounded playtime is 154.7 hours. Grounded takes the cake. I can't say I'm surprised at the two finalists in my little bracket here, but I will say I am surprised at how hard it was to actually eliminate some of these games. Survival mechanics starting off first. Valheim has a better survival mechanic because it gives buffs. Crafting goes to Grounded because of its uniqueness. Resource gathering is very similar for both. I've gone back and forth with the item management for both games, but I think solely based on the reason that you cannot become over encumbered and grounded, which is one of the most infuriating things to me as a gamer, uh, grounded takes the dub on this one. Building, grounded has really grindy building, but it's satisfying and things you can do with zip lines and stuff make it really fun. Valheim, also pretty grindy building. It incorporates the mechanic of you can get your base attacked by enemies. Grounded also has that sort of, but not in the same way that Valheim does where it does it with hordes or something is attacking you at a specific time, which I don't know how I really feel about to be completely honest with you. Aesthetics are so different and so hard to compare for both of those games. I'm going to keep that one as a tie, but I'll go back to it if I need a tiebreaker. Combat. I've mentioned how Grounded has a wonky combat system comparing the average enemies that you encounter. In Grounded, you're limited to bugs, but the variety of bugs is there. And some of them don't attack you unless you attack them first, which is a cool feature that Valheim does not have. I guess you do with the deer, so it does have that. This is hard. The boss fights in Grounded are done really well. They have really cool boss mechanics and same with Valheim. So combat is a one-to-one -one again, somehow. I don't know how. World and graphics, both stylized games, vastly different though. Personal preference, I like the brighter color palette a little bit more in this case. I think it adds more variety to what you're looking at in the world. So I'm gonna give that to Grounded. For progression, both are very similar, but I think the pacing is nailed in Valheim versus in Grounded, it can get a little bit too grindy at certain points. So Valheim wins on progression. Quality of life. It was easier to play through and beat Valheim than it was to play through and beat Grounded which means quality of life. If we're looking at it solely from that point, I have to give to Valheim, which would make it a tie. Okay, building and combat, looking at both of those together, looking at the nitty gritties. Late game in Valheim gets really cool because you get some really awesome weapons that make you feel like a powerful wizard Viking guy. Late game and grounded, also really cool. You get some magical weapons, which you wouldn't expect from a game like this. Both games have death mosquitoes, which <laughs> are a negative in my eyes because those enemies are extremely extremely annoying. Okay, so I just went through and counted the amount of creatures that Valheim has versus the amount of creatures that Grounded has. It's literally gotten to that point. Grounded is our winner for Survivor Game Royale. Boy, that was more difficult than I ever wanted it to be. But I'm glad we've gotten to our winner and now we can do the final face-off versus Grounded and V-Rising. V-Rising is going to get a little bit of special treatment. Since it just dropped, I wanted to do a in-depth overview of the game. The survival mechanic in this game is very unique to being a vampire, which is really freaking cool. You go out into the world and you meet a plethora of different types of creatures from humans to animals to monsters and everything in between. Each of these creatures will have a specific type of blood. For an example, I'll give human warrior blood. Depending on how hefty this warrior is, you can get a better stat boost off of it. If you fight these and get them low enough to be able to drink their blood, you can take on those stats for yourself. Later in the game, there's a mechanic where you can make some of them your servants and you can pool the blood from them. So you can really dive into being an evil, evil vampire. Crafting is really simple, really straightforward but it's solidified. By that, I mean it's done really well. You have a specific set of weapons. The weapon variety isn't insane, but as you progress through the game, through the crafting systems by doing your little tasks, etc., etc., you will get upgraded versions of said weapons and armor. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth when I get to progression, but we'll move on to item management. Again, another mechanic where it doesn't reinvent the wheel
scale, but it keeps it super simple and it works really well. You have a specific amount of slots in your inventory and bag that you can upgrade and enhance as you play through the game. Building is something that surprised me thoroughly in this game. Even though essentially this is a top-down game, you can do so many things to build your base in this world to make it look absolutely stunning. The aesthetics have that Castlevania and Victorian vibe to them as they should being a vampire game. You can have a proper vampire castle that isn't limited by the top-down mechanic. You can make a second floor and it gives you everything you need from storage chests to different types of workbenches, each with its own really unique and cool aesthetic. Combat is where I think this game shines and possibly outshines many games within the category. To keep the overview of the combat brief, you use your mouse to point in the direction that you want to be hitting in. You have your buffs that we talked about before that you get from your blood. You have magic that you unlock as you progress through the bosses and each of the weapons, depending on which weapon you have and what rarity slash what upgrades you've done to it, has a unique move tied to the weapon. That is such a brief overview of the combat, barely scratching the surface of everything that this game has to offer. But again, I want to keep it brief, so let's move on to world slash graphics. As far as being a vampire game, this nails the feel and aesthetics. We talked about it in the building, but also progressing through the world and, you know, getting burned by the sun and finding every inch of shadow you can possibly find in order to not explode just really nails the feel of being a vampire. The graphics are beautiful and stylized, and the game runs perfectly without a hitch. I don't think I've ever crashed in this game. I don't think I've ever had any game-breaking glitches. I've never had FPS drops unless it was caused by some sort of server lag. All of the character designs are unique and cool. There are just so many good things I can sit here and say about this game. But I think it's time this came to an end. We went on a quest today to find out what is the best survival game and the answer is 